So we've looked at limits from the graphical perspective. And again, the limit, the big idea of limits is, is trying to figure out where it looks like it's heading. Okay? So limits allow us to go to places where we actually can't go to. So let's go over some basic limits again. So when the limit of any number divided by infinity is zero, and the other idea is if we get zero over zero or infinity or infinity, those can be anything. So those could be, this could be equal to zero, could be equal to one, it could be equal to infinity, we don't know. Same with this. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at uh, limits at infinity. So looking at the graph, so we're going to see what happens to the graph as x goes to infinity. Okay, so if we do our limit, we plug in our limit, we're going to get infinity in the numerator, and we're going to get infinity in the denominator. So we have infinity over infinity. So if we take a look at the graph, it looks like it's heading towards a horizontal asymptote, and it looks like that asymptote is at x or y equals 2. Okay, so in this case, it appears that our infinity over infinity is equal to 2. So how do we get there? algebraically. So by the graph we're going to just claim that this is a case and this is what limits are. It looks like it's headed towards 2, but what is the algebraic strategy to do this? Okay, so if we take a look at this uh, number one, we could use an argument to get there. Okay, so the argument looks like this. So if we look at x squared, okay, our x squared value, as x gets really, really big, 4x plus 2 and minus 1 become really, really insignificantly small relative to the x squared. So, for example, 1 billion squared is almost a billion times as big as 4x. And it's going to be, you know, 1 billion squared times bigger than plus 2 or minus 1. It's the anything with a lower power becomes insignificantly small. And that's just at a billion. We're going to infinity, which is way bigger than a billion. So what the argument we use is the 4x plus 2 essentially is 0 at large values of x. And the minus 1 here essentially is 0 for large values x here. So in the end, we end up with this ratio, 2x squared over x squared. And the ratio tends towards 2. Now, it never really equals 2 because these aren't really zeros. But it looks like it's headed towards 2. Okay, So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is we could divide every term by its highest power. Okay, So if we divide every term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power, we keep the ratio balanced. And we end up with this. We end up with... 2 divided by x as x goes to infinity, well, that's 0. 4x divided by x squared, well, really, that simplifies to 4 over x. And as x goes to infinity, that equals 0 as well. Same thing here. 1 divided by x squared as x goes to infinity, that's equal to 0. And then we end up with 2x squared over x squared, which is 2, x squared over x squared, which is 1. And as x goes to infinity, this ratio tends towards 2. So we can do this algebraically in this way. We get the same result. And notice that everything's consistent. The, the graphical result, it looks like it's 2. The algebraic results look like they're 2 as well. So these are ways that we can start using some algebraic properties to be able to evaluate limits. Because we're not always going to be able to look able, we're not always going to be able to look at the graphs or tables.